two. So these are good and all, but let's uh, take it up a notch. So I tried this thing earlier and I failed and it didn't work out. So now I'm gonna do a tutorial about it. Uh, let's do the advanced version of that, right? So we start off drawing a circle and then we uh, set up a border and then we give it another circle, right? So far, so simple. And then we um, give us our cylinder and then we shift F to flip that baby. And so far, so good, right? So now what we wanna do is real early in the game, we wanna set our origin to be this, this face right here. And also, I don't know about these relationship lines. It makes me wonder where these objects are supposed to go. And, you know, things are gonna get weird, but let's go back into local mode. And the first thing I wanna do is first shift duplicate this thing. And of course, it's gonna give me a cylinder. What did I expect? But yeah, you know, we'll just select some faces and let's try that again. We'll circle select some faces and we'll press control I and I just realized um, my other mic isn't on. All right, so continuing on. So we'll put a loop cut here and press K and just do a cut like so. Maybe in this area, do a cut like so. And we're just going to just grab this area of faces we made and just use modifier apply to just put that on the other side with the quickness. And I'm gonna press I to inset. And we just got this little leaf here. And we could press Q and solidify. Keep in mind, my origin is this place right here. Um, I'm pretty sure that's where I messed up earlier. And you'll see why as we go on. And by control clicking radial array, we're able to radial array it um, without dealing with issue. However, we probably wanna go in edit mode and just lower it down. And we'll just do a difference cut, but we don't want a difference. We want to shift it and make it a slice. And we see the shading breaking down. So let's go ahead and mitigate that. Just like that. And we lost our bevel size a little bit, but just debating on if it's for the better. And I'm just putting some more loops in just to make sure the shading is just right. So if we take a look at our shape here, we already have a pretty good thing going. However, we probably want to apply the Boolean at least, which is the only thing that's going on with this thing. And by doing so, now we have the actual object itself. And I will select this area and we'll set the 3D cursor to it and we'll try to rotate it. We see if that did not work out. So I am going to select this one and delete everything else by inverting it. So we will just re-add the, we'll snap our cursor back to this important area. And we will do a, another radial array. And we can't see it in edit mode, but what I also wanna do at this point is snap my cursor here and we'll shift A, add an empty. Like I said, this one is gonna be a more um, kind of pro mode of the last tutorial. The first one was to um, just kind of break the ice, but this was kind of what I intended to show you guys. So we'll tap into edit mode and we'll press um, you know, control H, hook to selected object. And so now we should be able to rotate this and it comes out like so. So, you know, all of that just to set that up and really all that to set that up because I'm so lazy, I don't wanna radial array it manually and have all these bones and this crazy nonsense just to do this very simple thing that should just be very doable. So we come out of local and, you know, things are looking good. I feel good about myself, you know. So we'll select both of these and let's control P, parent them to this. So now this object can move. Let's try that again without box cutter active. We control P. And so now we can move the object and it's almost fine except for this Boolean here. And we could just late parent and that will keep it non-destructive, but 
actually, you know, for the better, we should probably just apply this Boolean and move on with our lives. And also one of these bevels isn't real. It's that one. In fact, I even wonder about that weld modifier, but it looks like it's um, doing us a service. So we're just gonna leave that and I'm not gonna ask any questions. So here we are with our you know, radial array object that's now parented. So we're kind of expanding on the same idea. Uh, we'll hide this one. This empty is important too. How many empties did we make? All right, so this one, what is it doing? It's doing nothing. What is this one doing? This one is the core of our radial array. So we don't want to delete it and we don't want to apply it. So we also want to parent it to this object as well. And so now we can actually freely move. However, we can't adjust the count anymore. You know, we had to just make peace with that. However, we are getting somewhere. So we press Alt-H. We're back in our scene. Things are fairly clean. We actually no longer need that cutter. We're still trying to keep things kind of clean just so we can have a nice way out. And because we have this loop, we're going to just use uh, control clicking to make that a piece. And we'll just change our um, pivot point from 3D cursor back to medium point. And we'll make that uh, arrow again. I don't know. I never get tired of making this arrow, but one day you'll see a feature where we just add these arrows that radial spin and you'll just be like, why is he doing that? Why did he add such a feature? And it'll be because I'll have done this for the, you know, one millionth time. So many things are to commemorate me doing something, you know, so many times it was just ridiculous. So we'll try that again with our 3D cursor actually placed where it's supposed to be. We'll spin it, but we'll change this to use duplicates. More than likely, I'll be checking into that, but I'm pretty sure there's a good reason that it's not on by default. I just have to remember why that was. You know, defaults are a, uh, a crucial thing to consider. So now we go ahead and we put our driver, our good buddy. We'll see. Pound coast frame times 0 0.15 and you're probably wondering about these numbers and they're just numbers I found that just worked for you know being understandable and so let's go ahead and set up our constraint again and I just want to tell you that the key to success with constraints for me is not using world space world space will work and will work at the time you'll be you know you'll, you'll be able to call it a day right but there will come a day when you will have to pay that price. You'll be like, why won't this read in this position is because of gosh darn world space. So we want to get the rotation of the Z, uh, negative 50, positive 50. Yeah, I just noticed because I've been with this driver so long. And we actually want to map that to the Z of this. So we start playing with the numbers we can actually see what we're getting here but let's look at what numbers we're getting from the constraint i also want to have a system that makes a number show on screen to let me know what the constraint's doing like i mean that's why i feel that there's some sort of management system to be made for dealing with drivers but you know i digress so we go back to this object and we're looking at our constraint that we were playing with and we basically want it to go down you know, we could wait for the other number and play with that one instead, but something like that. And so the object comes up, comes down. However, it really comes up so and, and goes down so fast. So let's try to have it come up and stay. Let's try to do it at negative 20. Let's try to do it at 20 itself. Let's also uh, slow down the constraint for a moment. So we'll actually uh, take this number and, I don't know, divide it by half. Will that just work? Math. Actually, no, uh, that was not a good case. We actually just want to divide this number by half. Sorry. All right. 
so we don't have that smooth loop you know i could ask loof about that but we're just um letting it sit and so we have these uh, degrees that's not having activity because we um you know basically between uh 20 and negative 50 we have that whole axis we have that whole area to play with and you know the weird thing about blender 2.9 now is you can control c copy something and we can just control v paste i guess you can't do it everywhere i guess but that would have been cool right so we'll just use the spacebar option spacebar copy constraints to selected objects you know, one of them looks like the option, the other one looks like kind of questionable, but we'll go with that one and let's try that the other way. Let's um, reverse our selection. Nope. I think we actually had it right the first time and I was just afraid. Yes, so I was afraid. Sorry about that. I just saw it move and was scared. But what I want to do is basically go from um let's say negative 30 to uh 20 just really cutting it close you know and between this rotation i can't explain this shit. sorry you guys i'm doomed but anyways um between this rotation is we're, we're just talking about compressing one one frame of time between another frame of time of, of using the de degrees as time and we just want to rotate we want it to rotate this thing <coughs> uh like so so we're basically mapping the z to the rotation god i need some water all right so we are rotating this on the x axis so right here we're already inside the um, area that we want so this is basically the result Ooh, terrible let's um let's get that right so we have it rotating on the min actually let's put that back at zero um let's copy it first so we'll put them in there and then set it to this Let's try that again. So negative 30 to 20, and we have it mapped to this. So are we picked, we're picked to the right object. Just making sure that we're completely sane. Like I said, I was messing up on this earlier, and now here we are, 12 minutes into a tutorial, sweating hard. Um, Let's try negative 50. Also, we did play with the... Um, we're still between negative 50 and positive 50. However, we do need to keep an eye on what our flaps are doing. So it looks like they're absolutely doing nothing. So... Let's get in and check that out. Just want to make sure everything's all right. We could have it on extrapolate, but that would actually just make it go on forever. Oh, okay, Z is the one that we're looking for. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Like I said, this is so complicated to deal with. However, I do see that there's a worth to it if one could manage such a system. And I am crazy enough to attempt such. However, you know, all that we ever endeavor to do is because of the greatness that Blender is. So, you know, not even joking. It's because Blender is just so gosh darn versatile that we were able to turn it into, you know, what we're looking at here. I mean, I just looking at it in the end looks great. This it was almost worth the pain. However, let's also um, get weirder with it, right? Because we won the game, and also we're 14 minutes in. Let's say that um, I'm not having an audience full of people who are um, 
angry when I do longer content and they just want me to um, just really beat this horse to death. So we'll fill this one and we'll, we're just gonna take this object and rip it off and it's now its own object and we'll fill its face too. And we're just, you know, looking at what we have here. We could just parent this and not do anything, but I'm gonna possibly have this uh, do something as well. Just uh, thinking, thinking on my feet here. So maybe something like that. And we could actually uh, press I and work this in. You know, sometimes I do my best thinking when I'm, um, oh gosh darn. So basically if you uh, go into bevel width and adjust things at this point, you can't, you have to shift click it to basically bypass scale being applied because it is one of those things. Um, you could just blame it on thousands of people in the past who had issues with their bevels being skewed. And that's the reason that bevel is the way it is now. But anyways, we have this thing and it slid just down way so far. Or did the timeline repeat? Oh no, no, this thing went straight to hell, you guys. Uh, also, we are going to find a neutral position, which is this one. We're just gonna turn off this constraint, just remove it and bring this object up. Not the best way to do it, but you know, we're in the end game, guys. And now let's talk about what happened when this thing got sent straight to hell. All right, you know, maybe it wasn't of the, the Catholic faith, but in any case, we're gonna to need to um, save it. So we'll just uh, adjust some parameters because maybe the scale got changed, but now we have this insert that comes out and we can lower it in. And what we wanna do is whenever it comes out, it maybe does the opposite of what is, so if it's rising up, it should come down. That would be cool. So. You know, when it comes to selection blender, it's kind of different than when, when it comes to selection with us. Like you would select the object and the target or, and then you would control numpad minus to do a bull in. But you know, if I wanted to copy these constraints, I would do it um, kind of in a different order. And also, did I copy the right constraints? It looks like things are breaking a little bit. Let's double check that. And so they come in but there's a bit of rotation that happens past, okay, extrapolate. You wanna make sure extrapolate is not on. And so now we are back in control. So things can get out of control real fast if you're not aware of what's happening. So, you know, basically our goal is that it comes up and the button comes down and then uh, the opposite. So. Our constraint never copied. Let's try it the other way. And now our constraint is here. So we have it at least uh, where we want it, except, you know, maybe some of these numbers are botched. So let's say we're here. What do we want to do? I opt for that. And then when we come out, wait, when we come out, Like so, maybe about, maybe even right here before it comes, uh, before it pops out. This would be a good time for us to just lower our button. So, kind of a strange button. <laughs> All right, just thinking out loud here. However, that doesn't mean I do not love it. In fact, we could actually um, put a little, a little uh, additional detail on this. However, I'm pretty sure that at this point, once you begin adding drivers, you've already built your shape. Like you shouldn't be <laughs> box cutting things that have drivers on. I was pretty sure I was about to um, make this tutorial slightly longer. So let's talk about actually making this into a repeatable insert. You know, it's still kind of a basic insert. You know, I'm going to play with this concept afterwards with like a solenoid for like 45 minutes and end up making what should have been this tutorial. But I do like to keep things short now. It keeps my days a lot more manageable. So if we grab this cylinder and we move things around, we see that this is in control. So we are going to just parent it 
to this thing. And we are going to grab this face and we're just going to lift it up and we're going to grab this shape and like the Joker, we're also going to rise up. However, you know, before I did that, I forgot a crucial step. So at this point, I do want to set my origin to this area and then I want to rise up. And then with this shape, I'm less concerned with the origin. We just want to rise up. And so if we move things around, we see what we have so far with our hierarchy. So we want to grab this piece and this piece, and we can also parent them as well via keep transform. And now we are actually good to go. And if we play it back, we see that this thing will rise up, deploy, close, go back down. And of course, these rigs that I use that are, um, you know, using these drivers, they're stand-ins for, you know, if I had bones, if I had this thing at the end of some sort of robotic dragon tail or something, then I would have a bone that would choose whether this thing deploys or not. But that's besides the point. I just wanted to um, do a tutorial on this topic. So now wrapping this up in a nice bow with kit ops, we'll call this insert test. It turned out that the um, insert at the um, origin at the beginning was the uh, solution at the end. So we'll control S. Also, let's stop pointing the timeline. Um, enough victory. So Alt G, we're just gonna place this in the center and without fear, we're just going to go to our new demo pack and we're just gonna call this Anticircular 2. So actually, do I wanna play the gambit? You know, I always play this gambit where I just select the what I assume to be the parent and I choose create insert. And then I just hope that all the adjacent pieces come. And you know, every now and then I play and what I receive is that and that is not a bad result at all. So we will just lower that down and everything's looking great except, you know, I always need a material, you know, maybe um, something else, something more unified. Also, I can't just slap a bevel on it. It'll mess with the drivers. I mean, I could, but we shouldn't play that gambit, you know? So we will just save our insert at this point and and a circular two. We can save our insert. And at this point, we're just doing it for the gram, guys. So that means that, you know, we can embellish this photo all we want. And so I want a good photo of this insert. So we're gonna get a good vantage point. And we can, um, you know, basically control a visual geometry to mesh. And We'll just put a bevel on this one. Doesn't matter because we're not saving it past this point. That would be suicide with our insert. Let's bring this back up. And it's just going to reset every time I bring up bevel, but that's fine. We're just trying to get a good render happening here. Like I said, sometimes it's good to uh, take this render thumbnail opportunity to just embellish the opportunity that it's not going to save. In fact, you should definitely not save if you're following this workflow. But I'm just showing you how I would work with KitOps if I was working with KitOps. So we have this save. We can control in, make a new file. We're done with that. And, you know, first let's sharpen this cube. We don't want any problems. And we can just go under new demo and any circular two is our newest insert that we're welcoming to the installation. So we're just gonna plant a couple of these puppies in here and keep in mind this thing was like a hierarchy nightmare and we delicately handled it. And so this moment is our victory lap. So how did it work out? What is our result? That is our result. So with that, we'll wrap up this video. Sorry for being so long in the content. You know, I'm pretty sure I also worded it terribly. People following along are gonna have a terrible time with this, but I hope that you was able to learn a little bit about drivers and how they can assist you with creating more interesting inserts. I mean, this is only the first level. I could have written out a table and 
we could have played within the time frame and then really slowed the insert down to make that time stretch out to something more intricate. But hopefully you get the idea with this. And I'm just looking at it. It's actually kind of nice to look at in retrospect. It was definitely worth doing the second video today. So with that, we'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time.